It's day 37, and we're going to be looking at string slicing. What, what, what does that mean then? Well, apart from the really cool action that I get to perform over and over again in this video, string slicing is about chopping text into parts. And this is really, really useful because sometimes you might want to look at just the first letter of a string, or maybe you want to look at all the different parts of a string and chop it into chunks. Whatever you want to do, string slicing is the way that we do that. Okay, here we've got a very simple string sentence. And let's say that what we want to do is chop out that first letter. Now, why might we want to do that? Well, certainly that will come in useful when you're making menus, if you're just looking at the first letter of the command rather than all of it. But for argument's sake, let's just say that we want it. How do we do that? Well, you're gonna be blown away because printing a string and a single letter from it is as easy as using the square bracket syntax. Yes, that's right. We've been lying to you. All along, a string was just a bit of a list behind the scenes. In fact, it is a list. It's a list of individual letters and symbols. So that means if I print out index zero, that should be the first letter. Fantastic. But there are ways of chopping out individual parts. Let's say I wanted that first word, hello. Well. I can add a colon to the mix here and I can add a start and a stop position. So if I start at index zero and continue to index five, what am I going to get printed out? Now this works a little bit like that range function where I'm stopping one before the last number I'm putting in there. So to get hello, I had to go up to index five rather than index four. But this is pretty cool. This means I can extract parts of words now and chop things up to do interesting stuff. If I wanted to extract the word there, how would I do that? Well, I'm gonna start at index six, which is the T, seven, eight, nine, 10, which means I should put one more in the right-hand side and I can extract that complete word. Now that's pretty cool, but it is very manual. That does involve me working out what I'm doing there. This string slicing method, though, is very, very powerful. If I want to start it at the beginning and don't always want to be defining zero, I can just leave it blank. This should print out the words, hello there. I'll try and say that in my very best Obi-Wan Kenobi accent. Hello there. No, that's just a bit creepy, I'll stop that. But if you leave any of these arguments out, it goes to the default. The default for the starting position is the first place. The default for the ending position will be the last place. So if I do that, I get the entire string. But this is pretty cool because if I only want to print from position 11 onwards, right to the end, I can do so, which is pretty cool. The third option is the gap you're going to leave between the letters. By default, that's one. It's gonna move one letter at a time, but we can change that. If I put a two in there, it's going to give me every other letter. Hello. Which is sounding like a different language. Remember, if I change, if I leave the defaults out, so in this case now I've got colon, colon, so I'm saying default at the start and default at the end and print me every other letter. I'm printing out every other letter. What about every three letters? There we go. Note that I do get the spaces as well, because it's not just the letters, it's the actual string locations that I'm pointing at. But this does give us one superpower, which is quite useful in some conditions. If I change that to a negative value, remember this is the gap. So I'm starting at the start, I'm going to the end, and I'm going backwards this time. What do I get? I get the entire thing backwards. And that is really, really useful sometimes for chopping out bits of sentences that you might want. The other thing that's important at this point is the split function. Split is a really cool function because what it allows you to do is to split an entire string up based on the space characters. So it's turned the string into a list of the individual words. Now this is pretty cool because if you don't know how many words or what they're going to be, you can split them into individual ones and analyze each word separately. And of course, you can start applying other things like lowercase or using a loop to go through them and change the way they're presented. Split's really cool for accessing different parts of words if you want them.
common mistakes then? Let's see what's happening here. Oh, slices cannot be zero. Well, if you're gonna put in all three arguments, the last argument, remember, is how many letters to move each time. If you're telling it to move zero letters each time, then technically you've told it to print out the same letter for infinity. So that always has to be the default of one, or alternatively, the third argument should be left out if you're just planning to print one letter at a time. There's another problem with that one though, isn't there? And what's that? I'm trying to slice out the first word. I think I've said, I wanna slice out everything from index zero to index four. Well, that's not quite what I've said. Index zero would be zero, one, two, three, four, which you'd think would stop there. But unfortunately, there's a implicit less than in that right-hand side. So it's always gonna stop one before where you think it's gonna go. In fact, what that really means is go four places. So it's gonna get us the first four letters rather than all the letters in there. To fix it, you need to make sure that second argument always goes one place further than you think you need it to. Once again, I've accidentally broken some of my own code. See if you can fix it for me. Okay, your challenge today is a bit of fun. You're gonna generate your Star Wars name. Yes, you think my Obi-Wan Kenobi jokes earlier were just because I'm a giant nerd. Oh no, we're gonna be generating your own Star Wars name from a few key facts. Now you'll need to ask the user for their first name and last name. You're gonna take the first three letters from your first name and the first two letters from your second name and you're gonna glue them together. Ideally, changing the case of that glued together wood so that it looks good. You may need to use F strings for this. To make your last name, you need the first two letters of your mother's maiden name combined with the last three letters of the city in which you were born. Glue those together, change the case, and present both words on the screen at the same time. Extra credit if you're able to take in all these inputs just using one input command and that split function we talked about earlier. Share your Star Wars name generator with us in the community by publishing it and using the hashtag replit 100 days of code when you're sharing it. And remember, may the force be with you. Well, now that I've given it away that strings are secretly lists in disguise, let's take tomorrow to see what that means for loops.